Amazon is so gigantic and so reliant on on high rate of turnover uh, are running out of uh, workers to exploit. They literally are running out of workers. Destroying minimum wage myths with Robert Reich. If your business model depends on paying your workers starvation wages, you should not be in business. The federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour hasn't been raised since 2009. That's the longest period without an increase since the minimum wage was enacted. Meaning today's minimum wage is actually worth far less than it was in 2009. This is an insult to American workers and bad for our economy. It's far past time to raise the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour. Today's federal minimum wage is a starvation wage. A full-time minimum wage worker can't afford a two-bedroom rental in any city, county, or state in the entire country. Meanwhile, billionaires like Jeff Bezos can afford a DC mansion with 25 bathrooms and five living rooms, just one of his many mansions. Now, the current minimum wage isn't so low because these workers are worth less than they were years ago, quite the contrary. If the minimum wage had kept pace with workers' productivity increases since 1968, it would be over $22 an hour today. Even so, conservatives are out to scare you about raising the wage. Let's debunk each of their talking points. Myth number one, if businesses have to raise wages, they'll cut employees' hours or cut jobs altogether. Rubbish. Since at least the 1930s, Critics have argued that setting any minimum standard of decency at the workplace will raise employer oh, costs yeah. and kill Like child jobs. labor. Child labor laws, the 40-hour work week, workplace safety laws. If we've learned anything over the years, it's that treating workers decently is worth the price. Besides, an abundance of research shows that increases in the minimum wage do not reduce the overall number of jobs. Researchers examined 138 state-level minimum wage increases and found that the number of low-wage jobs remained essentially unchanged in the five years following the increase. But workers were paid more. That's a job upgrade, not a job loss. And multiple studies have come to the same conclusion. When I led the fight to raise the minimum wage in 1996, Many conservatives predicted huge job losses. Shit, well, Newt I'm Gingrich. happy to report that after the increase, almost 10 million low-wage workers received a raise, with no decline in overall employment. It's simply a myth that raising the wage automatically means lost jobs. Not to mention the benefits for workers themselves. Raising the wage to $15 an hour by 2025, as proposed in the Raise the Wage Act, would give 32 million workers a raise. Here's the bottom line. If your business model depends on paying your workers starvation wages, you should not be in business. Myth number two, small businesses won't be able to afford the higher wage and will be put out of business. Baloney. The fact is a higher minimum wage can actually lower costs to small businesses. How? Well, for starters, a higher minimum wage attracts more potential workers into the labor force, thereby giving employers more choice of whom to hire. This leads to higher productivity and better service. Better service means more satisfied clients and customers. Higher paid workers are also more likely to stick around, saving businesses the hefty costs that come with recruiting, hiring, and training new workers. A study of the San Francisco airport confirms this. Researchers found that following a wage increase, a majority of workers who received a raise improved their overall performance. The higher wages even led to shorter airport lines. Researchers also found that employee turnover declined by 34%, saving an estimated $6.6 .6 million a year. Smart business owners understand the greatest part about the turnover rate is that, like, Amazon is so gigantic. I love who you project you are on stream. I don't know what that means. Okay, anyway, um, Amazon is so gigantic and so reliant on, on high rate of turnover in an effort to combat, uh, like...
One of the few sectors where, where people are working alongside one another and therefore higher likelihood of unionization and uh, demand for better benefits and compensation um, and unionization are, are running out of uh, workers to exploit. They literally are running out of workers because they're just, uh, because of the constant fucking turnover. They just, they go into a, an area and they're just like, all right, after two years, three years, all right, you're done. We fucking worked you to the bone. We're, you know, we've done enough. You've, you've worked enough here. Get the fuck out. And now a leaked Amazon memo warns the company's running out of people to hire. By 2024, they could run out of people to hire in the U.S. warehouses, according to leaked Amazon internal research from mid-2021 that Recode reviewed. If that happens, the online retail service quality and growth plans could be at risk, and its e-commerce dominance along with it. Raising wages and increasing warehouse automation are two of the six levers Amazon could pull to delay this labor crisis by a few years, but only a series of sweeping changes to how the company does business and manages employees will significantly alter the timeline. Maybe they should fucking want the union to, uh, you know, maybe they should support the ALU. I'm just saying. If we continue business as usual, Amazon will deplete availability of the labor supply in the U.S. network by 2024. It's because they're too large, dude. And it's too vast. And they're everywhere. So they're literally running out of people to exploit in towns when they have a two-year turnover. They're going to exhaust the entire available labor pool in Phoenix, Arizona, metro area by the end of 2021, and in the Inland Empire region of California, roughly 60 miles east of L.A., Amazon's internal report calculated the available pool of workers based on characteristics like income levels and a household proximity to current or planned Amazon facilities. The pool does not include the entire U.S. adult population. The research provides a rare glimpse into the staffing challenges that Amazon is now facing behind a slick veil of one-click online shopping and same-day prime delivery. Leaked internal findings also serve as a cautionary tale for other employers who seek to emulate the Amazon way of management, which emphasizes worker productivity over just about everything else and churns through the equivalent of its entire frontline workforce year after year. In the past, that churn wasn't a problem for Amazon. It was even desirable at some points. It was always desirable. It was built into their fucking business model. You know? Their goal, uh, it was built into their, their business model. You hire, you work them to the fucking ground, and then you fire them so that they, before they even, like, have any, any kind of solidarity with the rest of the fucking workforce, they're already out the door. Ford, after introducing the $5 day in 1914, when typical industry wages were less than half that, called it his best cost-cutting strategy because of the productivity boost that followed. Myth number three, if the minimum wage is raised, prices for everything will skyrocket and lead to widespread inflation. Wrong again. Researchers have found that for every 10% increase in the minimum wage, prices increase by less than half a percent. And it's a temporary price increase, occurring only in the month the wage hike goes into effect. No way this sparks inflation. In fact, the minimum wage needs to be raised so it can keep up with inflation. Because of inflation, today's minimum wage is worth almost a third less than it was worth in 1968. And since it was last raised in 2009, it's lost 17% of its value. This means that compared to 2009, minimum wage workers have lost $3,950 every year. So that's why a higher minimum wage would boost economic growth. 70% of the economy depends on consumer spending. So more money in people's pockets means they can spend more on the goods and services that keep the economy going. Oh, and raising the minimum wage would reduce the amount of money taxpayers spend on public assistance that families need because their breadwinners don't make enough to live on. It's estimated that nearly half of federal minimum wage workers' families are enrolled in at least one safety net program, costing the public $107 billion every year. That's right. Our tax dollars are subsidizing corporations that don't pay a living wage. Myth number four. Most minimum wage... Remember when I told you that fucking uh, the greatest welfare queens or whatever are fucking rich people? The Walton family doesn't operate. The Walton family doesn't have a Walmart without government subsidies and, and, uh, and, and the, the EBT program without food, uh, without food stamps. It just doesn't work. It does not fucking work. They need it. Otherwise, their workers will fucking starve. And they still starve.
Workers are teenagers making some extra money on the side. They don't need a wage increase. More rubbish. While this might have been the case in 1968, it certainly is not now. Today, only one in 10 workers who would benefit from a $15 minimum wage increase is a teenager. More than half of them are between the ages of 25 and 54. More than half of them work full time and over a quarter. Doesn't it work the other way around too? Like normal non Walmart people will also not have Walmart. No. It doesn't work the other way around. Walmart can stand to fucking pay its workers more and eat into its profit margins, okay? But of course, the way that Walmart operates, they never want to cut redundancies on uh, dumbass initiatives, okay? Or marketing or whatever the fuck. They only want to, they only want to improve their profit margins by, uh, by ensuring that they're paying their workers as little as possible. Having no having no say we're having workers having no say in the process too of course yeah ebt for their workers and ebt for their local customers and also ebt for their workers who then become their local customers that's the best part about fucking walmart like you work at walmart walmart doesn't even pay you enough to fucking survive you get government uh, cash assistant okay you get snap and then you turn around and use it at walmart order have children Today's minimum wage hurts people who are in their prime earning years, preventing them from building wealth and establishing financial security. Raising the minimum wage would also help reduce racial and gender pay disparities. Minimum wage increases and expansions in the late 1960s reduced the income gap between black and white workers. Raising the wage would have a similar effect today because black workers Hispanic workers and women comprise a large portion of today's low wage work. Fuck Walmart. Hope you don't shop there. I mean, I would if I, if there was a fucking Walmart in my in my neighborhood or in my vicinity. I live in L.A. There's like one Walmart, brother, and it's not very close. Workers. In sum, raising the minimum wage is good for workers. Like, what do you mean? Is, is there artisanal shopping? Yeah, let me go fucking let me go let me go find an artisanal store, dude. Like, yeah. Do some consumer side activism, you know? Oh man, fuck Walmart. <laughs> yeah. I go to Target only. Yeah, okay, sick. <laughs> Cause that's that's much better. Good for businesses and good for the economy. In addition to all this, raising the minimum wage is the morally correct thing to do. It ought to lift working people out of poverty, not keep them in it. We're the richest country in the world, home to the richest people on the planet. We can and we must treat our workers with the dignity and respect they deserve. That starts with paying them a living wage. That was uh, another Gravel Institute video with Robert Reich. Destroying minimum wage myths uh, with Robert Reich. Great video. Once again, they're popping off. Half of the chat just gotcha attempts. There are literally zero Walmart locations within a seven mile radius of West Hollywood. Yeah.